Hey guys, it's Sheena from Teton Raptor Center and I'm here to give you all this week's patient update. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna kick things off by highlighting our most recent release. Here we have Swainson's Hawk 515, and this bird came from Victor, Idaho with some head trauma. He went back to the wild yesterday on Thursday and we're really excited to get him out the door. Our second release that we were able to do this week um, is from Swainson's Hawk 611, and this bird just got released last Sunday back out into Idaho Falls. Moving along to our current patients, we actually just admitted a quintuplet set of baby American kestrels. These guys had been nesting in a fence post and the fence post was unfortunately and totally accidentally cut down. Um, and that's when the homeowner discovered that there were a bunch of baby kestrels living in there. So um, all those kestrels ended up making their way into our clinic and they're all living together. Um, we are trying to actively get them back out to other nests since they are completely and totally healthy. However, we can't put them back uh, where they came from because that fence has fully been taken down and we can't just put them in a new nest box because American kestrels, unlike some other birds, won't just continue to care for their babies if they've moved to a completely new nest site. So if we were to put up a bird box, put them all in it, even if we put them right by the fence where they had originally been nesting, it's not um, a guarantee that the parents will still continue to care for them. So in the meantime, we have them here in our facility and our goal is to get them back out to the wild into foster nests. So if you guys know of any active kestrel nests in your area in Wyoming, please do let us know and hopefully we can get them back out there soon. Next up this week is Great Horned Owl 626. And this juvenile bird initially came in due to a talon injury in one of his toes. Um, the injury is doing much better and um, the bird is actually been moved into our quarantine zone. We were worried because we saw a couple symptoms that might be related to avian influenza. However, he has completely perked up and done a full 180. Um, he's alert, he's feisty, he's all the things that we want to see in a young owl. So as soon as those test results come back negative, we'll be able to move him out of the quarantine zone and back into the clinic. And we've got some other owls about the same age as him that he can go ahead and live with. Next up this week is another juvenile great horned owl. This is great horned 625 who came to us from Meenan, Idaho. Um, this bird came in with some soft tissue injuries to his right wing and his right leg. You can kind of see a little blue bandaid on his right leg. And then you can see that piece of tape that he has apparently decided he wanted to pull off of his wrap that was on his wing. So something that we'll have to address and put back on in a minute, but um, he's doing well so far. Moving right along, next up is Red-Tailed Hawk 619. This bird came to us from Tetonia, Idaho with a pretty severe soft tissue injury to one of his legs. Um, we're not sure how this happened, but as you can see in this photo, he's missing several layers of skin and all of the feathers in that area have been uh, removed as well. So this will take quite a bit of time to heal, um, but we do expect that all that tissue will regrow and eventually he will be able to regrow new feathers in that area on his leg as well. Next up this week is Great Horned Owl 619, and this is another juvenile owl that's only just several weeks old. Um, he came to us from St. Anthony, Idaho with a patagium injury. So the patagium is actually a section on a bird's wing. Um, it's a part of skin that pretty much stretches from their wrist all the way to their shoulder. And when their wings are extended, that part of skin is able to stretch and extend. And then when their wings are tucked in, um, that piece of skin is then kind of tucked up and kept together. So it's a really important part of skin. It helps birds flap and glide and soar. So as soon as that injury heals up, we'll have to make sure that he or she is really good and capable at flying before getting back out to the wild. Next up is Golden Eagle 615. This bird came to us from Matitsi, Wyoming and has a fractured humerus. So um, he actually underwent surgery. The surgery was a success and we were able to put a metal pin in his 
humerus bone and in five more weeks that pin will come out and we'll begin physical therapy. Next is Golden Eagle 313. This is the bird that came in with a ruptured crop that has since healed and a fractured coracoid. Um, here he is out in the flight barn doing some flights. So we're excited to get him back on his flight conditioning journey. Last but not least this week is Golden Eagle 39. And this is the bird that had a metacarpus fracture that has healed but is still um, growing in a ton of new feathers on both wings. So until those feathers grow in a little bit more, we won't be able to fly him in the flight barn just because he can't fly without his flight feathers. So um, stay tuned and hopefully in the next uh, month or so, we'll be able to move him into a flight barn enclosure. All right, that's all we've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed learning more about our birds. Remember that if you wanna do your part to help keep wild birds wild, you can check out our website at tetonraptorcenter.org and make a donation. I'm also gonna link that donate button in the comments below, so be sure to check it out there. Bye.